Hey folks, Matthew Crowley coming to you today with a Hollywood special effects tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to cover how to add the glow to still images of lightsabers. Let's get started. I have all of the images that I want to work on as a collection in Lightroom already. We'll start by opening an easy one in Photoshop. Now this isn't going to be a fully movie accurate lightsaber. Industrial Light and Magic used multiple layers for their lightsabers in the prequel trilogy. I'm just going to show you kind of the quick and dirty way. The first thing we want to do is create a path in the shape of the lightsaber column with the pen tool. You can find the pen tool in the lower half of the toolbar or by pressing P on your keyboard. I usually start at the beginning of a straight line when I use the pen tool. For straight lines you just need to click once and then move on to where you want to make your next point. For curves it's a little trickier. You want to click and drag near the center of the curve with the mouse to create the Bezier curve. I'm not going to go into what a Bezier curve is, just know by clicking and dragging you're making one. When you come back around to your first point, the cursor will have a little circle next to it. This indicates that by clicking on that point you are closing the path. Now you may notice that I uh, left a little extra space near the base of the column. That's because in the movies they're not exactly a straight line, there's just a little extra space near the base, so I, I left just a little bit extra for that. If your path doesn't completely cover the column of the lightsaber, don't worry, you can easily tweak this by using the direct selection tool in the toolbar or by pressing A on your keyboard. Once you have the path the way you want it, it's time to go to the uh, paths panel, it's right next to the layers panel, and we're going to turn the path into a selection by clicking the make selection button at the bottom of the panel. Then we can return to the Layers panel, and we're going to make a new blank layer and fill that selection with white. Now here's where the real fun begins. We're actually going to add the colored glow to the lightsaber. With Layer 1 selected, we're going to click on the FX button at the bottom of the Layers panel and choose Outer Glow. This will bring up a Layer Style dialog box, which will be in the Outer Glow tab. The first thing we want to do is change the Blend Mode from Screen to Normal. Next we want to choose the color for our lightsaber. It's important to use the accurate color for the lightsaber if the character is actually from the Star Wars universe, so you may want to do some research to see what the color the uh, character actually has. In this case, Mira Jade has a very sky blue colored blade. So we're going to click on the paint chip and choose the, that color blue. I'm using a hexadecimal color that I predetermined for this lightsaber, but you can just use the color picker to find the color that you want. Now we will adjust the size as desired for the glow and then add just a very little spread as well. The size and spread will be different depending on both how large the resolution of your image is and how much of the image the lightsaber makes up. That's all the settings we need to change in there. Once we're happy with the outer glow, we'll then choose the inner glow tab from the layer style dialog box. I'll again change the blend mode to normal and I'm going to use the exact same color for the glow this time. I'm just going to ever so slightly add a little size to the glow. You don't want to add too much otherwise you'll get a weird aura effect that's kind of undesirable. Also definitely do not use any choke. The last layer effect we're going to use, and this may sound a little funny, is drop shadow. It just adds a little bit more layering to the glow in my opinion. Again we're going to change both the blend mode to normal and use the same color. I'm going to change the distance to zero and the size to roughly half of what I use for the size of the outer glow. And that's pretty much it. Once you're happy with how that looks, press OK in the layer style dialog box and voila, you have a lightsaber. You can always go back to those layer styles and tweak it if it doesn't look quite right to you. Once you're comfortable with making the lightsaber glow, you can save the glow settings as an action after you make the path. That way you can easily click and apply the action to any path you create in any color you like. I've created an action for some of the most common lightsaber colors from Star Wars. This also comes in very handy, especially when you have multiple lightsabers in one shot or you want to quickly change the color of the lightsaber. After applying the setting, you may need to tweak the uh, actual size of the glow and the size of the drop shadow, depending on how big the lightsaber is in the screen. There may be some cases where the lightsaber will be partially obscured by the subject. In cases like that, you can't mask the lightsaber itself with the effects applied, or it will create a glow on every edge of the mask. 
You could flatten the layer and then mask it, but I like to leave it with the effects applied in case I want to go back and tweak it at some time, or the color, or the amount of glow. So instead, we're going to duplicate the background layer by dragging it down to the new layer icon. And then we're going to drag that layer on top of all of the layers. Now we can actually paint back in the areas that are supposed to be on top by using a white brush. Careful to not go past the edges. This may take a little time to get right. In other cases, it gets even more complex. For this image of Obi-Wan, I created a path that I'll use for the mask that'll be more precise and it'll avoid the effect spilling over onto the unwanted areas. With a couple layers and a lens flare, you can also kind of create the effect of the lightsabers when they clash. You can also use this similar lightsaber glow effect to use on blaster fire as well. And that's pretty much it for what I have for this tutorial. I'd like to thank the members of the 501st Legion for posing for these images. They're a really cool worldwide group of costume enthusiasts with a collective identity who use these costumes for Star Wars related events and also to contribute to the local community through costume, charity, and volunteer work. Check out their Facebook page, it's really cool. If it wasn't for them graciously donning their lightsabers, blasters, and armor, the only thing I'd have to work with is some lame shots of myself with a toy lightsaber.